Hello again and welcome back. In this video, we'll learn some more Greek vocabulary having to do with the life cycle. The basic verb that means I live is zao. This is an alpha contract verb. And one thing to be careful of here is that uh, where most alpha contract verbs have the alpha show up a lot in their endings, uh, with zao, we instead see an eta showing up in the endings. For whatever reason, that alpha uh, that's normally there gets lengthened to an eta. And so the present indicative forms are zo, I live, because remember the uh, alpha uh, contract uh, vowel usually drops out in the first person singular. So zo, and then zeis, uh, you live, and ze with an iota subscript, he, she, or it lives. Then in the plural, we have zeman, we live, uh, etc. There's a cognate noun, heidzoe, which means life, derived from zao, I live. The verb genao uh, speaks of the start of life, and this means I beget or I conceive. This is really the act of giving someone life, whether it's the father doing it or the mother doing it. In English, we use different verbs for uh, giving birth or for uh, fathering a child. But in Greek, one verb is used uh, both for the father's contribution and the mother's contribution. A related noun is hey genea, which means a generation or a lineage. Um, this can be either a line of conception, so a line of people who are related by conception, or it can be a group of people who were conceived together, uh, a generation, or by extension, a, a group of people who are ethnically related. Gameo uh, means I marry or I get married. And children, uh, conception was generally viewed as the main purpose of marriage. In the ancient world, people generally thought of life as being divided into three phases. There was uh, infancy and childhood, and then there was being a young adult, and then there was being an older adult. So tapaidion means infant or child, and together with terms like pice and technon that we've already seen, uh, tapaidion was the term for this first phase of life before adulthood. Hot Neaniskos means young men or youth, and it's related to the adjective neos, nee, neon, which means new or young. But honeaniskos really isn't necessarily a very young man and isn't necessarily a youth in the sense that we think of youth. It uh, can be an adult. The point is that honeaniskos is not yet the oldest adult generation. Uh, usually, Honeaniskos has no grandchildren. This is the uh, parent generation that might have children, uh, but isn't yet the oldest living uh, generation, uh, isn't yet reaching the oldest of the three phases of life. That oldest phase uh, is represented by the adjective presbuteros, presbutere, presbuteron which means older, and when it's used as a substantive, ha presbuteros, it means elder. And this was the oldest generation in the household. Early churches were very often structured like households, and so it was very natural for the older generation, the people who were in that older generation, uh, people already called elders, it was natural for them to rule the household because in ordinary households, that older grandparent generation would generally uh, be obeyed by the younger adult generation and by the children. So presbuteros, uh, elder, is the word uh, that comes down to us in, in terms like presbyter and presbyterian, because uh, over time, this word that originally just meant an old person uh, it came to actually be seen as an office in church leadership. At the end of life, most people in the Greco-Roman world didn't have very much hope for life after death. 
or at least not a positive life after death. Some would have uh, put their hope in expensive mystery rituals and initiations that promised uh, a few people who could afford them some kind of immortality for their souls. And some philosophers would have believed in immortality. But Jews would have been highly unusual in expecting the body to be restored. The basic adjective meaning dead is nekros, nekra, nekron. And we see this show up in a lot of compound English words like necropolis, the city of the dead. The noun for death is hothanatos. And the verb I die is apothnesko. Notice that there's an iota subscript in the middle of this word, which is actually very unusual. The second aorist uh, form of apothnesko is apethanon. And just take note that the second aorist stem here is apothan uh, instead of apothnesk. The verb apokteno, on the other hand, means I kill. And you just have to watch that this is a liquid first aorist. So it takes first aorist endings, the alpha uh, connecting vowel, but it doesn't uh, use the sigma tense marker because the end of the stem is that new, apoktain, and the new uh, makes the sigma tense marker disappear or absorbs it. So it's apectaina in the first aorist. Necros, necre, uh, sorry, necra, necron is an adjective meaning dead. And we find this coming into English in many compound words. Um, so necropolis is the uh, city of the dead or a, 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 a graveyard. Hothanatos is death itself, and apothnesko is a related verb meaning I die. And notice here the uh, iota subscript in the middle, which is unusual. Apokteno, on the other hand, means I kill. Tomnemeon is a grave or tomb or monument, and it's related to a term uh, verb for memory. On the other hand, Hey, anastasis, resurrection, was not something that was uh, expected very much by uh, Greeks or Romans. Uh, this is a third declension polis type noun, and really this was a distinctively Jewish idea. Um, while there would be sometimes an idea of life after death connected with some of the mystery cults or with philosophical schools, um, generally outside uh, Judaism and then early Christianity, the assumption was that this afterlife would either be um, a, a disembodied afterlife of the soul, or it would be uh, some sort of reincarnation or, or rebirth in another body. The idea of one's own body uh, being reconstituted and, and raised again from the grave um, was really a strange idea which was made possible for Jews partly by their linear conception of time. The idea that time wasn't just cyclical over and over, but was moving toward a definite judgment and a definite uh, era in which death would be done away with and, and all things would change.